Right, Happy New Year. Uh, welcome back to uh, what is now officially Lockdown England and pretty much Lockdown the whole of the UK. Um, so I'm at home. Lizzie's at home. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So uh, <laughs> we're kind of back where we were in March, but without any of the sunshine and none of the novelty. Yeah, back it, right where we started and uh, preparing for a lot more Zoom calls, I think. It's, yeah, like this one, clearly. Um, it's kind of put the nation in a really sombre mood, I, I think, isn't it? Anecdotally speaking, everyone's like, really? Like another lockdown and we can see the reasons why, but um, it's just coming at this time of year, the middle of winter, the evenings are dark, you can't go outside. It's, n it's not fun, is it? No, Jan January's not the most cheerful of months anyway, and then to be locked down um, uh, without sunshine this time is, uh, yeah. Not I can't that, remember but. the last time I actually saw the sun, to be fair. Uh, looking outside, it's pretty great again today, pretty mm -hmm. wet. Well, at oh, least well. it's sunny so, this time. At least we can look forward to it getting sunny yeah. this time. Every evening, let, let's, um, as the Queen spoke about in her Christmas broadcast, let's talk about the lights bef uh, which follows the darkness. And uh, every evening is getting slightly lighter at the moment by mm -hmm. two minutes or so, so we can look forward to summer finally coming uh, and actually I mean I was thinking what are we going to talk about the Royals haven't done very much but me and Lizzie just went through the list and it's actually a fairly lengthy one isn't it? It is well we haven't done one of these in a fair few weeks now so we've got a bit of catch up to play uh, but yeah it's been uh, it's been reasonably busy uh, I've got a sizable list here. Yes and I suppose the other thing we should mention is that this time last year um, I was working and you weren't. Um, you were on holiday, I wasn't. Uh, I was at Canada House in London uh, with Harry and Meghan. I was actually on the, the rotor job that day uh, inside the house, the High Commission with Harry and Meghan. Little did we know that the very next day they were about to drop that bombshell. Yeah, so for people listening, we record the day before this goes out. So we're recording on the 7th uh, of January. So exactly a year since that uh, Canada House engagement. Yep. And then tomorrow when this will go live, the 8th, was when that bombshell hit. And um, I think I was lying in a hammock in Mexico at the time um, when my phone pinged. And um, that yes. was the end of the piece. Yeah. <laughs> I recall being in the office. Luckily, I was in the office. Uh, and it was just before the bulletin at 630 and um, or actually we might even been up on air already and an email dropped from Harriet Megan saying, hello, everyone, we're leaving. That's it. <laughs> right. So yeah. Uh, anyway, we can talk about that in much more detail. Um, the year anniversary of that announcement, uh, the Queen's Christmas broadcast and everything else will all be contained in Robinson's Royal Rundown, which is coming your way right now. So, uh, yeah, we should start with the, the boss. Uh, the Queen's Christmas message, uh, of course, aired on the 25th on Christmas Day uh, and was very focused, as you'd expect, on coronavirus and hope in that we'll come through this pandemic. Um, we have had the first uh, cull from the royal calendar this week. We heard that garden parties for 2021 are off. They are not going to go ahead at Buckingham Palace or the Palace of Holyrood House. Uh, a new initiative uh, for the Duchess of Cornwall um, is being launched uh, later this month, but we've had a slight teaser for that uh, in the last week. The Duchess of Cornwall's reading room. Uh, Harry and Meghan's podcast, Archwell Audio, uh, went live with a special holiday edition and uh, their website um, had, it had launched already, but sort of, it was really just a landing page. We've had a lot more uh, substance on that page now and some details of uh, partnerships they've formed. Um, we have got various court cases to talk about connected to Harry and Meghan. And Prince William has been secretly volunteering uh, for the Passage Charity, which he uh, cares very. Difficult to know where to start. I think we should kind of start with the boss, shouldn't we? Um, it, it, was, it, it was on Christmas Day, obviously. Um, we actually get a sneak preview of it a couple of days before, don't we? So uh, we have to keep our lips very tightly sealed after we've been shown the Queen's Christmas broadcast before the rest of the UK uh, and the Commonwealth. Um, but... Again, I think a lot of people said that it really did hit the spot. Uh, she spoke about the, the light, which, you know, a, a dawn which always follows the darkest nights, the light which comes at the end of a, 
of a dark time. And it's kind of, this is even before the lockdown was announced, but she was kind of summing up what's been an unbelievable year for, for, for everybody. Yeah, and I thought that there was a real personal um, tone to the message, particularly when she talked about all people really wanting was a squeeze of the hand or a simple hug and that those people are not alone. This is affecting all of us, whether that's right at the top, you know, the members of the royal family, um, it, it's affected absolutely everybody. And she also reflected how her Christmas was different this year. And there was just that simple picture of Prince Philip from her private collection um, reflecting how she, like all of us, was going to have a very uh, quiet, slimmed down Christmas. Of course, for many, this time of year will be tinged with sadness. Some mourning the loss of those dear to them, and others missing friends and family members, distance for safety. When all they'd really want for Christmas is a simple hug or a squeeze of the hand. If you are among them, you are not alone. And let me assure you of my thoughts and prayers. And that I thought was very personal, Lizzie. You don't often hear the Queen saying that people just want a sort of touch of the hand or a simple hug. Um, and when we ask uh, Buckingham Palace whether you know she was sympathising with people, they were saying you just got to you just got to look at the Christmas that she was having herself without her family um, because of all the different tiers which were in place over Christmas in the UK. It meant she couldn't get any visitors from. Charles and Camilla or William and Kate or anyone else. So she had uh, what was described as a quote, quiet Christmas, just her and the, and the Duke of Edinburgh. Yeah, I thought the other thing that was really notable in the message was that um, we know that faith is deeply important to the Queen, but she really reflected throughout the whole message, all faiths, it was a really inclusive message that, you know, people from all faiths have been affected by this, um, this year and, their, their celebrations have, have been impacted. So I thought she, she, you know, that was really sensitive of her to um, convey that. Yeah, she was saying, it's, you know, it's also about Eid, it's about Passover, it's about all these faiths have uh, been unable to celebrate in the way that Christians haven't really been able to celebrate Christmas uh, with the ones that they love as well. Um, but the, the theme was all about light and darkness. So take a listen to this bit where she spoke about the, uh, you know, every night is followed by a new dawn. This year we celebrated International Nurses Day on the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale. As with other nursing pioneers like Mary Seacole, Florence Nightingale shone a lamp of hope across the world. Today our frontline services still shine that lamp for us, supported by the amazing achievements of modern science, and we owe them a debt of gratitude. We continue to be inspired by the kindness of strangers and draw comfort that even on the darkest nights, there is hope in the new dawn. And it might be the depths of winter, but the Queen already has decided, or Buckingham Palace has decided at least, that there won't be anything happening in the summer, at least as far as garden parties are concerned. Those are the four, I think it is, isn't it, Lizzie? Four garden parties, three at Buckingham Palace, one at the... Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh, where the Queen thanks those from voluntary services, etc. And all those garden parties at this early stage of the year have already been scrapped. Yeah, the, uh, the deadlines uh, for those garden parties uh, were fast approaching and decisions uh, needed to be taken. And it was just not feasible to know at this stage with COVID, um, it was difficult to plan. So the decision's been taken early to scrap those, which uh, for the second year in a row, they now won't uh, go ahead, which is a real shame for those thousands of guests that are sort of rewarded and recognised for their public service. Yes, exactly. And they won't get any of those famous sandwiches that you get. <laughs> uh, which, I mean, I went, we didn't, there weren't any last year. We went to one the year before, didn't we? Was it the year before we went? Yeah, year before. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it's a really special day for thousands of people. Uh, I had a, a sunny day, I don't think you did. You had a rainy day, didn't you? Is that right? Oh, uh, dreadful. <laughs> it was really, really rainy. Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very soggy. Um, there were a lot of people, though. I mean, I was amazed by how many people you can get into the Garden of Buckingham Palace for these garden parties. But yeah, among them, I mean, uh, were volunteers, charities, uh, military 
veterans, um, current armed forces personnel, etc. It's how the Queen sort of thanks everyone for things that they might have done during that previous year. But I mean, goodness, what they're going to do in two years time when they reinstate these garden parties in 2022, <laughs> they're going to have a backlog of two or three years. Well, I would have thought this, this summer would have been a really lovely opportunity for her to thank all those sort of heroes that have played such an important part in getting us through this pandemic. Um, so hopefully next year uh, they'll be back on and she'll be able to take that opportunity then. Yes, I mean, uh, I, I agree with you. And actually, the, the garden parties, you know, people might say, oh, who cares that that's been scrapped? But it does actually mean a lot to a lot of people who put in, who volunteer, who put in their own time for charities in their communities, doesn't it? It does. And there are also um, special garden parties held as well. There's one every year for the Not Forgotten Association, which is a charity for war veterans. And those are in addition to the, the sort of the, the four main ones. There's three at Buckingham Palace and one at Palace of Holyrood House. Actually, I remember one of the garden parties when they last held them um, was hosted by Harry and Meghan. Um, uh, <laughs> we know that they won't be at the garden parties this year because uh, they're not happening. But um, it's, it was me trying to find a, an appropriate segue to talk about Harry and Meghan. Kind of work. Um, do you remember though? Uh, actually, didn't they went to a garden party for Prince Charles's seventh? Prince Charles's seventieth. Yeah. Oh, right. It was their their first uh, engagement just after their wedding. Um, yeah, right. before they went on the honeymoon, wasn't it, or something? Yeah. 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 Blimey, that was less than two years ago. Who, who knew? But exactly a year ago, uh, we know where we were. Well, I know where I was. Uh, Canada House. Um, you were working and I still wasn't. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, Harry and Meghan had literally just come back from Canada that day. They'd left Archie in Canada. If you remember at the time, they were having that extended break from their duties on Vancouver Island in the far west of Canada. And they came back, uh, they came back and they were about to drop a bombshell. Little did we know it at the time. So let's remind yourself of the pictures of them at Canada House. So this was on the 7th of January, 2020, before we started talking about coronavirus and lockdowns and social distancing and face masks and transmissibility. Before all that, uh, the story that dominated the news for about the next week and a half or so and rumbled on for another few months as well was the Harry and Meghan boom announcement. Yeah, well, this was their chance to go to Canada House to thank the Canadians for their, uh, their hospitality during their, uh, their extended break. And we'd known when they'd gone away for, for some time away that they weren't very happy and they needed some time off. Um, and we thought this was them returning to start afresh in the new year and then <laughs> boom. And who could have known at the time? We, I mean, we literally thought this was the biggest story. The world was imploding. It was all anyone talked about. Um, yeah. and, then, and then coronavirus happened. And I think if it hadn't, you know, things, their, their initiatives, their uh, non-profit, they, they would have got a lot further with, um, with all those things. But obviously the world has stopped and yeah. there's bigger things happening. And we'll talk about those in a minute because actually they have now launched the podcast and our to our website and some of the uh, organisations that they will support. But this time last year was all about how they would tear themselves away, how they would divorce themselves from the institution of monarchy, what they would do, how they would do it uh, and, and all the rest of it. Uh, have a little listen to how we announced it. I think this, this is our um, evening news on the night it was announced. Um, and I saw this on a on a review of the year or something quite recently. Actually, the Netflix review of the year was about Harry and Meghan and uh, Mary Nightingale announced uh, that Harry and Meghan had uh, decided to leave and I just run down to the studio and found a tie to put on. Uh, and this is how we announced Harry and Meghan's departure a year ago. I'm going to move on with a bit of breaking news tonight. And the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have announced that they are carving out what they call a new role for themselves. In a statement released in the last few minutes, they say they intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent. Well, our role editor, Chris Ship is here to tell us more. This is pretty dramatic stuff, isn't I mean, it? It's a bit of a wow moment, isn't it? I mean, basically, as far as I can tell, I mean, this, this statement landed in my inbox uh, less than 10 minutes ago. Um, they are resigning from the royal family. Uh, it's simple as that. They are stepping back as what they call senior royals. Let me just read you the statement that they've issued uh, literally in the last few minutes. Uh, it's fairly long, but it's worth going through it. After many months of reflection and internal discussions, we have chosen to make a transition this year in starting to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. We intend to 
to here's the key bit step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent while continuing to support her majesty the queen they go on it's with your encouragement particularly over the last few years that we feel prepared to make this uh, adjustment and we now plan to balance our time they say between the united kingdom north america continuing to honor our duty to the queen the commonwealth and our patronages so it's been forward a year, a whole year, and uh, we now have some announcements, at least, uh, about what they plan to do or how they, you know, what, what their life is going to be. We've got some sort of shape now, haven't we? If you look at the Archwell website, there, there's sort of three sections to it. There's the, the production arm, the deal they've done with Netflix. There's the podcast, the deal they've done with Spotify. And then there's some of the organisations that they want to work with going forward. Yeah, well, one of the big things they wanted was financial independence. They spoke about that um, when they left and they have definitely achieved that. I mean, they've got huge deals, the Netflix deal, the Spotify deal. Um, that's going to bring them in big money. Um, enough to pay for a house in Montecito. Yes, enough to pay for a very, very large house. 16 bathrooms, isn't it? I think so, yes. I still haven't counted all the toilets, but... Um, <laughs> All the WCs they've got to clean every day. Um, but yes, uh, I mean, that, that money's coming in. As you say, they've got the financial independence. Uh, and now we kind of know what they're doing with the money or, or with some of that money. Well, they, um, the website uh, has, has gone live. And with that, there was this letter to 2021. And we know that Archwell is all about, for them, it's about building a better world. One act of compassion at a time, they say. And on my Twitter, actually, I had to, funny enough, I had to kind of like, not treat it, but just bring out the, the, the images because there's only two images on there. And this was a bit talked about at the time that there's Meghan with her mother, Doria Ragland. And there's Harry with his mum, uh, Princess Diana. Um, no mention of either father at all in that um, website, which for whatever reason, but it, it did spark off a particular debate. But those are the only two pictures that are on there. Um, and uh, one of them, the, the one we think of... Um, Doria and Meghan we haven't actually seen before that that's a new picture the other one we've seen of Harry and Princess Anna but that definitely sparked off a bit of, of a debate didn't it about the the wisdom of of selecting the mothers rather than rather than the fathers yeah well the letter starts off I am my mother's son and I am our son's mother together we bring you Archwell and that's coupled with those two images at the top of the page so the first thing that strikes you is you know, I, I don't think it's surprising that she hasn't mentioned Thomas Markle, given um, everything that's happened over the last few years. But it did strike me as particularly odd that there was no mention of Prince Charles, particularly given his support for the couple. And, um, you know, you just think back to their wedding when he walked Meghan down the aisle, his support in their transition, financial support in their transition to their new life. Um, for them, him not to be included at all did strike me as um, mm -hmm. strange. It did stand out. And given that he, you know, he uh, it's different with the royal family, of course, but he was a single father having to sort of bring up William and Harry after the death uh, of their mother. And, um, you know, whatever else the demands on him is time from his duties and all the rest of it. Um, he had two young boys who were grieving their mother to, to, to look after as well. So that was interesting. I mean, it's not for us to, to, you know, say whether that was the right or wrong decision, but certainly it got a lot of, um, a lot of commentary. And then a list of some of the organizations they want to support, which included those that are sort of supporting compassion uh, and, and how to, how to treat people in a different way. That's the, probably the best way to explain it isn't it yeah it seems that this is all going to be focused on um yeah compassion like you say that was mentioned several times in the letter and the the types of um organizations they're supporting all seem to be about uh, helping people yes uh but no compassion from them and perhaps understandably many people would say when it comes to the mail on sunday um megan's court case against the mail on sunday does continue and we will get in a couple of weeks time won't we a decision by a judge on whether or not it will go to trial or whether it will be decided without a full trial and then Hag harry's got his own legal action against the the mail on sunday for the article they wrote more recently um about him according to the mail, allegedly, quote, snubbing the military um, after he left the royal family, uh, both of which are, are, are the subject of court cases at the moment. Yeah, one thing uh, has been quite clear since they uh, walked away from becoming 
uh, from being senior working members of the royal family is that they are not afraid to um, take legal action when something doesn't sit right with them. They are more One than happy to call in the lawyers. Only the other beneficiaries of their exit from the royal family is the lawyers um, and the money that is going to some uh, very well healed legal firms. Um, but anyway, should we do Megan's first? So, so Megan's um, decision, what's called a summary judgment, comes up in a couple of weeks, doesn't it now? Yeah, so uh, this will happen. Uh, originally, the, the trial before it was delayed was due to start on the 11th of January, but that has been... Uh, postponed until the autumn for confidential reasons. Uh, we don't know what those are. Um, but she is also applying to, uh, for the case to be decided by what's called a summary judgment, which is basically a legal step, um, which would mean that they that it wouldn't have to go to trial at all. It would just be decided by a judge. And the hearing for that will now take place on January the 19th and 20th. Um, it will take place virtually. So we will both uh, be there to listen to that or listen to it virtually um, and we'll see I mean you know this will be if it, if it goes to trial it'll be huge won't it yeah so the trial they say will be in October that was delayed we, we brought you that news last year um, if the trial goes ahead but if it doesn't go ahead then the judge is basically going to sit down and decide it on the facts that are in front of him so that could come to a rapid conclusion or it could be shunted off until the the autumn or the fall of twenty. 21. Yeah, I suspect um, the uh, I suspect the uh, royal family and probably Harry and Meghan are very much hoping that this doesn't go to trial because I think you know it will everything will be <laughs> aired in in yeah. open court. Yeah, and in terms of putting your dirty laundry out for everybody to see, uh, that would certainly be the case if there were to be a trial. And, you know, they, uh, I suspect the Mail on Sunday's publishers would even call Thomas Markle as a witness and he'll be giving evidence against his daughter. Um, so anyway, this is probably something that everyone wishes to avoid at the moment. Prince Harry's legal action, however, uh, appears to be coming to a conclusion, um, but his team wish that some of the evidence or documents are read out in open court and we got hold of some of those documents yesterday in which Prince Harry actually claimed and you can find the story on our website at itv.com forward slash news uh, that that some members of the military or the veteran community would have been at a greater risk of suicide these are his words not mine um, following the Mail on Sunday's claim that Prince Harry had turned his back on the military since he left the royal family. Yeah, so this, uh, this story claimed that he hadn't been in touch with the Royal Marines, that he had ignored a letter from Lord Dannett, and the legal documents that we've seen basically say that this um, diminished his credibility uh, within that kind of arena and risked um, people being less likely uh, to see help being offered to them um, and to take kind of his, his, him less seriously in that role. Yes, and given his role in, in, in the military is about supporting uh, mental health particularly, um, that was one of his great concerns. Now, the Mail on Sunday says that it's uh, apologised, actually wrote an article at the end of last month uh, apologising for the article and said that it gave a donation to the Invictus Games Foundation, Harry's uh, Invictus Games, uh, but we don't think that's the end of the matter and it will continue for a little while um, longer. Mm. Um, but on Harry and Meghan, should we talk about something very um, happy and positive that made everyone smile, probably uniquely so? Mm. What would I be talking about? Ah, the podcast. So Archwell Audio, their new... Yeah. Um, the whole podcast, <laughs> but a certain bit of the podcast. <laughs> their new tie-up with uh, Spotify. Um, yeah. The podcast was about 30 two minutes and if you get if you made it to 31 minutes you would have heard a very very sweet clip of um their son archie you can speak in turn archie is it fun 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 <laughs> after me ready happy what? happy new 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Boom>. <laughs> <laughs> So happy new year or new year. I couldn't quite work out whether they had an American accent or, or not. Um, he's got a dad with a very British accent, a mum with a very American accent, but he's obviously living in California. So one expects that the Queen's great grandchild will have quite an American accent by the end of it all. Um, but I feel there was definitely um, an American, there's definitely an American twang there, but of course there would be. Um, but that little giggle was uh, very, very sweet. Um, but I think there were questions raised. You know, there's been a lot 
Uh, they've talked a lot about um, Archie's privacy and wanting to keep him out of the spotlight. And um, then, you know, he is included in the podcast. So, um, you know, which they, they definitely didn't have to do. They had a lot of big names involved in that podcast. And however sweet it was and lovely to have him included, did they need to do that? Uh, yes, I think those were questions that were legitimately raised. I mean, I think Harry and Meghan would probably say, well, it's now their choice. They get to choose whether or not they, you know, put their son uh, in the public eye as they did on this uh, particular occasion, as opposed to sort of felt like they were forced to do so in the royal family. However, you know, you, you make that point about the contradiction between uh, some of the things they had previously said and are now doing with Archie. Of course, we didn't see him. It was just his voice that they used. But um, certainly it was even promoted on the web, on the podcast, wasn't it? They said there is a, a little surprise guest as well. So um, they wanted everyone to hear it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's, there's no taking away that it was um, incredibly sweet uh, and, and lovely to have him included. But I was just slightly surprised that, uh, that he was included, given how fiercely they have, uh, they have worked to, to protect him and keep him out of the spotlight. And if you, know, if you looked at the coverage of that podcast um, when it came out, it was all about Archie and Archie's first words in public. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, so they're, they're moving into podcasting and uh, TV production. Um, the Duchess of Cornwall is launching her own Instagram page, her own Instagram account called the Duchess of Cornwall's Reading Room. I've got a few books behind me, actually, uh, one of which I think was uh, one of her suggestions, um, because this all formed from the success of what she put out a reading list during lockdown. As if by magic, this was one of the books that that Camilla suggested that uh, you read called The Architect's Apprentice by uh, Elif Shafak. And uh, I read that, that was on her, on her list. And she's now formed this whole thing into a, not a book club, they tell us it's not a book club, but it's a kind of Instagram page dedicated to, to books and to reading. Well, it's basically, we know how passionate uh, the Duchess of Cornwall is about reading and literacy. She's patron of um, numerous organizations. And this reading room will, she's, she's basically hoping to encourage people to pick up a book, to engage, to talk about, uh, to grow a community around uh, the love of books. And um, this will officially launch on the 15th of January. And uh, they will, the reading room will suggest four uh, titles and there'll be discussions with the authors of those titles. And then um, throughout the seasons, there will be uh, new books added to the list and there'll be a real focus on, I think they want it to feel global. There'll be a focus on authors from across the Commonwealth, uh, a range of um, different types of literature. So, um, you know, I think it's just embracing one of her big passions. Mm. Indeed. Uh, and new pictures of her as well. And a conversation that she had with one particular author who's um, ended up on a lot of Christmas uh, present lists this year. Yeah, she, um, to sort of as a teaser uh, ahead of the launch on the 15th of January, uh, she had a conversation with the author Charlie Mackesy. And he wrote the lovely book, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and the horse, um, which uh, is a really, really lovely book. And they had a conversation. I've read it so many times <laughs> that it's an easy read, but it's a deep read at the same time. And you know, I, just, yeah, and I, love, I just love your drawings. I spent my whole life as a child doodling horses. Yeah, Have you? Me too. That's what I always uh, do. I mean, yeah. I, I used to do it everywhere, but mine unfortunately haven't turned out like yours. <laughs> but does that matter? I, I used to volunteer teaching people um, to draw in a place. Um, and a lot of them, people had had, you know, they were in their 80s, a lot of them. And I remember saying to them, they always said, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw. And I said, well, you can. It's just you can't draw like other people. Mm. But does that matter to you? What, why not just draw like you, only you could draw and then try and accept that? And and once they'd understood that, that their drawings needn't be as the same as others, they mm. then went, they, they just, they were unstoppable, these people. Probably in these lockdowns, I should have just sat down and and um, tried to do a lot more drawing. But I, I just actually immersed myself into books. And talking of said book, uh, and bearing in mind that uh, this was before the Duchess launched her reading room, uh, this arrived from Santa 
Um, mm. And there is the book by Charlie. Um, and if by it. magic, there it is. It's a it's really lovely magic. book. Nothing to do with Camilla. It actually ended up in uh, in Santa's stocking and now lives in our living room. So anyway, that's the first book that was featured and uh, there will be plenty more. Yeah, 15th of January, the first four books. I didn't um, just down there. It landed rather loud, <laughs> but it's, um, it's still in my face. Chuck it over. <laughs> <laughs> we just picked up time to talk about Williams volunteering for um, the homeless charity, The Passage, of which he is patron, which he did over the Christmas period. Yeah, he made uh, three private visits to The Passage charity, which is um, uh, a homeless charity. And he was uh, volunteering, helping to pack food, prepare hot meals, uh, chat to some of the residents. Um, and this came out, uh, I think we found out about it this week. So he did that sort of rather rather secretly before Christmas. But it's a, it's a charity that means a lot to him, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, actually, g given that it was a quiet period over Christmas, um, I think there's quite a lot um, packed in to this week's podcast. We'll go back to doing them weekly, although we have no idea whatsoever what any of the Royals are doing uh, over the next week. But, uh, but we I've got one guess. I reckon it will probably include a Zoom call or two. Zoom call or two, I reckon we'll get more details. Actually, we will get more details on the Duchess of Cornwall's reading room because that's on the 15th of January. Mm -hmm. that we'll have Megan's uh, uh, summary judgment hearing on the 19th. So yeah, so I don't know what, we're, anyway, I, I suspect that William and Kate will, um, now they've finished their Christmas holidays at Anne Hall, but don't forget we're back in lockdown here in the UK. There's no schooling, so I think they'll end up staying in Norfolk. The Queen remains in Windsor. Um, I actually don't know where Charles and Camilla are at the moment because um, they were at high growth for the Christmas period. Whether or not they can move around or not, I don't think they can. So they might have to stay there for the time being as well. But I imagine what we'll see is a, a massive push uh, in the coming weeks to again uh, refocus everyone's uh, attention on charity causes, people that are struggling, people that are you know helping all those sorts of things that they did the first time around so successfully, I think we will see a renewed effort. And a good note to end on is that this time last year, while you, swore, you were on your Mexican beach uh, in your hammock um, and I was working hard, I did, however, get to have something you didn't have, which was... Oh, you did, yes. A Nanaimo bar, um, the, the famous Canadian Nanaimo bar. Um, we should probably put a link on our, on our, onto our website of what it is. Um, what it is, is um, basically sugar and butter and chocolate and <laughs> lots of other things. And they were the things, here we go, you just about see it there, the Nanaimo bar. Um, that is something that I thoroughly recommend you having if you're a bit uh, fed up with the lockdown, you want something to cheer you up, you want a sugar hit of huge proportions. And that's something I discovered last year. It's a Canadian delicacy. Who knew? I didn't know, but I do now. Engagements that keep you happy often involve food. <laughs> exactly so. And the Canadian High Commission knew how to keep me happy by giving me an Nanaimo bar. So, um, and it's still an ongoing joke, actually. I think they were even were messaging me about it um, in the, back in the summer. Uh, and there were lots of them um, uh, one of their one of their receptions, which I didn't get to go to. But anyway, if you uh, Google it and uh, make it, and I can assure you that the Canadians know how to perk you up with a bit of sugar and butter. There we are. That's where we leave it this week. You can go make some in your kitchen. Oh, <laughs> I could, I could. Uh, we will see you all next week. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget on our um, Instagram, ITV News Royals. On Twitter, I'm at Chris Ship ITV, and you are. At Lizzie, uh, wait, Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Uh, Twitter. Twitter, at Lizzie ITV. Right, go and find us there. That's where you'll get everything that we've been talking about this week and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.